Good morning, and I take this opportunity to welcome you to the Come to the Water Television Ministry, a ministry of evangelization, bringing the good news of the gospel to everyone whom has an ear to hear, a heart to believe and receive, and I hope that this is you and I this morning for what this is the day that the Lord has made, and what are we going to do? We are going to rejoice, and we are going to be glad, for truly the joy of the Lord is our strength. Thank you so much for allowing me to come into your home one more Sunday where we can praise the Lord, we can magnify his name, we can glorify his name, we can lift up the name of Jesus. No other name but the name of Jesus. But at the mention of the name of Jesus, uh, every knee's got to bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. Amen. Get excited this morning because Jesus is excited about you. I come to tell you how much God loved you, and I come to tell myself how much God loved me. And I tell you what, there's nothing that we cannot work out in our lives, nothing that is so bad that we cannot work out in our lives with the love of God. Amen. He's a healer. He's a deliverer. He's a savior. He is the one that sets free. So whatever you need today, I speak Jesus over your life today. I speak Jesus over my life today because you know he sustains us. He loves us. Oh, I tell you what, we've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. The Holy Spirit has been given to us as a down payment. And I tell you what, we are working out salvation with fear and trembling. So whatever is troubling you this morning, I tell you what, we are going to have some personal confessions and we are going to talk about also putting on the full armor of God. Amen. Putting on the full armor of God. But our personal confessions is going to come first this morning. And it says, Jesus is Lord over my spirit, my soul, and my body. Philippians 2, 9 and 11. Now you get up in the morning and you begin to proclaim, declare, and decree what God has said about you. Amen. You change your mind as to what is going on, what kind of activity you have in your mind that wants to control everything, and it is not of the Word of God. We renew our mind with the Word of God. So therefore, we come and we encourage ourselves with that Word, that the transforming grace of God is going to be able to be loosed and work in our lives. We have the grace that we need that is sufficient for this day. But I tell you what, we can go on and we can put blockages in our lives and that transforming grace is coming to us, but because we are blocked up, what happens is we cannot hear, we cannot receive, and things may not uh, be going in the direction that we want it to go. So this morning, we look at uh, what this says, 1 Corinthians 1 and 30 and Philippians 4 and 13. Jesus has been made unto me wisdom, I've got God kind of wisdom. Hallelujah. You've got God kind of wisdom. Oh, we are overjoyed today that we have the wisdom of our Father. Righteousness, 
We have been made the righteousness of God because of Jesus, not because of ourselves, but when we come to know Jesus in the pardon of our sins, righteousness has been imputed in you and righteousness has been imputed in me. Yeah, hallelujah. Sanctification and redemption. We are being sanctified. We are being made holy. And I'll tell you what, that's going to be a journey of sanctification to the end. So you just hold on. Don't get disappointed in yourself because, you know, uh, listen, I've been born again for, this is what you may be saying, for the last uh, uh, 30 years or the last 25 years, and I'm still dealing with some stuff before my new birth. Well, I tell you what, you keep saying good morning to Jesus. You keep staying in the word of God. You keep changing your mind. You keep proclaiming, declaring, and decreeing what God has said about you. And all of that, the Holy Spirit is going to take care of. Believe in the power of God that is alive and well in you to sanctify you, to make you holy for the journey. And I tell you what, these little idiosyncrasies that we have will be disappearing. But we've got to put the time with prayer, talking to our Heavenly Father, in the word, and I tell you what, you're going to see a change come, amen? A change is coming, amen? All right. It says here, the Lord is my shepherd. Remind the devil. Who is your shepherd? The Lord is my shepherd. I do not want. My God supplies all my need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. So when things begin to squeeze in upon you, you get your Bible. And don't wait until things begin to squeeze in upon you to get your Bible and to start uh, praying that the Lord is your shepherd. This is a daily basis. This is how we do as Christians. Prayer is so very much so important to us. Conversation with our Father, reading of the Word of God, uh, knowing who we are, serving God, serving our neighbor. Uh, practicing love. Amen. <laughs> it has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. We practice loving people, practice loving others. We practice doing what God has called us to do until we get it right. So, you know, do not be too hard on yourself. Amen. Uh, Philippians 4 and 6 and 1 Peter 5, 6 and 7 says, I do not fret or have anxiety about anything. Don't be anxious about nothing. I do not have a care. You know, this is the word of God. This is what the word says about you and the word says about me. So why can't we speak it? Why can't we be, be determined that the word of God takes precedence over everything that is coming up against us? You know? We come up, up, up against a lot of things, but then we start to think about it. And when we stop and say, well, wait a minute. Hey, let me see what my father has already spoken to me about this condition or about this problem. And we begin to stand upon that word of God. We begin to encourage ourselves. We begin to say what thus says the Lord. And I tell you what, you say that and I say that often enough and believe that what we're doing, it shall come to pass. It will come to pass. As we believe, amen. So don't get discouraged this morning because God loves you with an ever lo everlasting love. Uh, it will not change. So therefore, we have to be the ones that are going to change. Change our minds with the word of God and begin to proclaim, declare, and decree what God has said about us. So call somebody up and tell them that come to the water is right now, which is our prayer meeting, before you go to church services, let us go to our Father in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just come before you in the mighty name of Jesus, coming before you always in thanksgiving, coming before you always in praise. This is the day, Father, that you have made. And regardless of what is going on with each and every one of us, you say rejoice and be glad in this day. For truly the joy of the Lord is our strength. O merciful Savior, we thank you for waking us up this morning. We thank you, Lord God, that we are clothed in our right mind. We thank you for the gift of health. We thank you for the gift of life. Most of all, we thank you for the gift of salvation. We thank you that we are believers and not daughters in your word. We confess this morning that you are Lord and that you are King. 
of our lives. And Father, we bring ourselves before you. We are in need to hear a word from you this morning. Our Father, which art in heaven, we hallowed be your name today. We just give you praise. We give you honor and we give you thanksgiving for being Lord of our lives. Thank you for adopting us, for calling us out of the kingdom of darkness into your kingdom of light. We love you so much. We appreciate you so much. We surrender ourselves to you this morning. And we say, Lord, be with us today. Lead us and guide us in everything that we do today. We give you ourselves today. And we look for your love to fill us to overflow. We come in unity this morning with those who are watching to praise your name, to magnify your name, to glorify your name, to exalt you this morning. To call souls who may not be in light, to call them out of darkness into your marvelous light. You are God and you are God all by yourself. Bless those today who are suffering in their bodies. Heal them, Lord. Deliver them, Lord. Set them free, O oh Father. Those who do not know you in the pardon of their sins. Holy Spirit of God, we are believing that you are calling through the spoken word. Cause them to hear today. Cause them to come and seek Jesus as Lord and Savior of their lives. We are believing it by faith that many souls are going to come to know you, Jesus, the one true and living God. As we continue to proclaim your word, as we continue to give the invitation to eternal life, we are believing by faith that something is happening in the supernatural realm. So today, as we pray for those who do not believe in you, we are believing for a multitude to come to you. We pray for those who are incarcerated, Lord God, today. Asking you, Lord God, that you would touch them, encourage them in their difficulties. You are God and you are Lord. Give healing, give deliverance. Set them free to open their hearts to you so that you may come on in. We want to thank you and praise you, Lord, as we pray for our nation, all of our leaders, that you would touch them in a very special way, that we could come back as a nation, one nation under God, a nation that is united and with Jesus as the head, all things can happen. So today, as we surrender all of our concerns to you, we are believing by faith that you are working it out for your greater glory. We give you glory, honor, and thanksgiving for it, for your Lord and your King, and we thank you. And it is in the name of Jesus that we pray and let the church say what? Amen, amen, and amen. All right, this is the day the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and be glad. We are going to go to our video, and I will be right back. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
just let me live my life and let it be pleasing Lord to thee and should I gain any praise let it go to Calvary to God enjoyed the video and the song to God be the glory Jacqueline Lede out of Houston Texas my niece is the one that is singing that song beautiful voice to God be the glory as I speak Jesus on your life today we are going to go to the book of Ephesians and we're going to begin with chapter 6 verses 10 through uh, 19. And Paul talks about putting on the whole armor of God. Somewhere today, get your Bible, get your Bible, and read what thus says the Lord concerning the whole armor of God. It says here, finally, be strong in the Lord. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might, or in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. Hallelujah. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. Take your walk serious. Take your walk with God serious. Don't think that Satan has left anything alone. Anything that God loves. God love you. God love me. Satan has a war planned for you, and he's got a war planned for me. But thanks be to God for the precious shed blood of Jesus. Thanks be to God for Jesus dying on the cross of Calvary that the battle is already won. But you cannot stop there. You must arm yourself against the wiles of the devil. Amen. Go back and read this for yourself and let the Holy Spirit just bring uh, illumination to you about the revealed word. He says, therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Warned us that the evil day is coming. The evil day is here. But you and I will be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand firm, stand therefore having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. And we come here today to bring the gospel of peace to you and to me this morning. I tell you what, we have been given everything that we need to be able to live a victorious life. If Jesus is on our side, 
What can the devil do to you? What can the devil do to me? As we stay in the word of God, we stay under the blood of Jesus. We declare, proclaim, and decree who we are in Christ Jesus. And I tell you what, I can shout today that victory is mine in the name of Jesus. He says here, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith. Where is your faith this morning? You have God-given faith. God has given you and God has given me a measure of faith. And we come here today to grow in our faith that God has given us, to turn things around in our lives, to pronounce uh, the good news of the gospel to ourselves uh, and every family member, every, every friend uh, on your job, in the church, wherever you are. Bring in the good news of the gospel. And sometimes you don't even have to open up your mouth. It's just by the way that you carry yourself. And he says, and in all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. You don't know the word of God. You don't have the sword of the spirit. Come on now. We cannot... Leave any one of these uh, uh, words out that has been given to us for victory. Praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication to that end. Keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. Just don't pray for yourself, but pray for all of your brothers and your sisters. Everyone that you know. If, even if they're not going through anything, pray for them anyway. The church should be praying for one another. And of course, Paul was saying, and also for me, that the words given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel. And of course, he was in chains. But God has given you what you need to open up your mouth to proclaim the mysteries of the gospel. The good news of salvation. And each one of these, if I have enough time to go through them, we will break each piece of that armor and let you know what each piece is in the days of the Roman soldiers back then and in the days of today. And it says here, I'm reading from a commentary, it says here, make no mistake, whether they are aware of it or not, all Christians are engaged in a very real spiritual battle between two opposing kingdoms. The kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. But let me tell you something. The kingdom of light has already won. Amen. It has already won. So uh, it's no, in other words, stay in the word of God. Find out what you got. Begin to proclaim, declare, and decree. Jesus is the Lord of your life. So what can Satan do to you? But that doesn't keep him from coming and from doing what he knows how to do. Lie to you. Lie to me like he has done for so many years. But when you come to know the truth, the truth shall make you free. Amen. It says you, using the armor of a Roman soldier as a model, the Apostle Paul describes how the Christian can stand strong in the midst of this ever-present but unseen spiritual battle. All right? The belt of truth. The soldier's belt served as the foundation of his armor, holding his sword and his breastplate. Because Satan is the father of lives, and you will find that in John 8 and 44, he cannot stand against the truth. Satan cannot stand against the truth. Jesus said, I am the truth. He said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the light. All right? Victory in spiritual warfare start with truth. Satan has been a liar. The truth is never in him. All right. The breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate guarded the heart. That's of the Roman soldier. The source of the soldier's life. In a similar way, righteousness protects 
the spiritual life of a Christian. Our righteousness comes not from ourselves, but from Christ. And you can find that in Philippians 3 and 9. All right? Shoes for your feet. Given by the gospel of peace. The soldier's heavy armored sandals gave him traction and security in the heat of the battle. Can you imagine that? Hey, that's breaking it down, huh? So our peace with God through Jesus Christ gives us security in the face of Satan's accusation. He's always accusing you. He's always accusing me. But in the name of Jesus, go to Philippians 4 and 7 is your reference for this. All right, this shield of faith. The soldier's leather-covered shield could be soaked in water to extinguish the flaming arrows of the enemy. All right. Faith in God's promises deflects and extinguishes the lies of Satan. Amen. Proverbs 35, 30 and 5, 1 John 5 and 4. All right. The helmet of salvation, the armored helmet, protected the soldier's brain. Since the primary battlefield of spiritual warfare is the Christian's mind, this is where the warfare takes place in our minds. Assurance of salvation defeats the doubts Satan uses to attack us. You will find that in John 10 and 28. The sword of the spirit. All right, it's almost time for me to go. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, Paul noted only one offensive weapon, the soldier's sword. For the Christian, the sword is the word of God. I hope that one word said in this teaching have you and I to understand. Go back and read. And it's broken down with each piece to tell you and me how much God loves us, how much God protects us, how much God is with us. Until next month, know that I love you with the love of Jesus in my heart. May the Lord bless you real good is my prayer for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. May the Lord bless you real good. May the Lord bless you real good. Won't be up this morning.